This video is presented by Glenn Smith Chevrolet GMC in Opelika. Get ready to smile. Hello, baseball fans. You're watching On Deck with Tyler Redman. We are joined by none other than Daryl Chaney. Daryl, a friend of the program. He's been with us many times, always sharing great baseball stories. Daryl, I wanted to talk to you, obviously, just about the the memory of Pete Rose and what he meant to you as a teammate and a friend later in life. Well, it, it, uh, when I when I first came up, he, he uh, one of the things I found out about Pete right away is, is that uh, he welcomed the younger players and kind of took them uh, under his wing. As a matter of fact, my my first uh, or second night in the big league camp when I was eighteen years old. Pete says to me, he said, Hey kid, what are you doing tonight? And I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the hotel and have some cookies and milk and take it easy. He says, no, you're going with me tonight. I said, where are we going? He said, we're going to the dog track. <laughs> so I didn't know he had a problem back then. He may not have had one then, but he took me to the dog track his first time, but he, he, he welcomed the younger player, took him under his wing and, and, um, uh, I, I remember that about him, and, and a lot of folks don't know because, you know, when you follow a guy like Pete, as great a hitter he, as he was, and a leader as he was, and then as, you know, he's going to be known for all that great baseball, for all that gambling. Um, he was a real kind-hearted guy to, uh, to me. I remember one day um, in 1972, Pete and Carolyn, his first wife, had a cookout for all of us at his house. And he said to me and Bill Plummer, our backup catcher, who just passed away, and uh, and Hal McCray, our outfielder, who had a pretty good career, says, uh, hey, you guys, come come with me a minute. So we followed him into his walk-in closet, huge walk-in closet. And, a, and a, he had a rambling ranch home back then in, in Cincinnati in the west side of town. And he had all these suits hanging in his closet. And they weren't tailored. They were just brand new suits. And uh, he picked out three. So here, Daryl, here's three for you. Here's three for you, Bill. Here's three for you, Al. <laughs> and you know, we weren't making any money back then. And I, I don't know where he got the suits. Uh, that, I mean, they weren't even tailored yet. So it was pretty easy for me. I mean, free suits. I'll pay for the tailoring. I wore those suits until I left Cincinnati. I now wore them for seven years on the road. Matter of fact, one of them I even handed down to my dad before my dad passed away. <laughs> so... Uh, the, 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 I remember things like that about Pete as much as I do, uh, you know, 4,156, uh, whatever he's got, 4,256 hits. Um, outside of out, outside of that kindness and so forth, um, I, I tell people all the time, if I was starting a Major League Baseball club today, uh, I'd go out, and, if I could get me 25, 26 Pete Roses, I could win a world championship the first year because as, as I watched him, uh, the years I was there and I'm, many guys could probably tell you this, but he saw many guys like me come and go in Cincinnati. But from the time he walked in, I don't care what he was doing before he got to the park, but what, from the time he walked into that clubhouse door um, and the way he got himself ready, I'm talking about taking off his street clothes and putting his uniform on and starting to talk baseball. From the time he walked into that door until the game was over, that, all he did was want to win that game. And he wanted to prepare himself and his teammates uh, to win that game. So we didn't have a, 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 a named captain or a C on his jersey back in those days, but a lot of us guys ca called him captain. And uh, you know, a lot of people called him Charlie Hustle, but the guys that played with him, we, I called him captain all the time. And he called me Norton all the time. So I'm going to miss him. Um, he didn't look good last week when I saw him signing autographs in Franklin, Tennessee. And, and um, I talked to Doug Flynn last night. Doug Flynn is a, is, was as close to Pete after the career uh, as anybody. And um, it's just, uh, it's just a sad day. I watched the last interview that he had done. I just saw that on Facebook where he said that he hoped that baseball would, would reinstate him before he died. And, uh, it's uh, it's it's really unfortunate that that didn't happen, Daryl. Me and you have talked about Pete. I feel like every time we talk about your career, he's just a name that kind of naturally comes up in conversation. How could it not? And you alluded to a little bit of the 
controversial side following his his playing career, but there was nothing controversial at all about the way he played the game. And I I I went and watched actually you brought up Doug Flynn. I watched my interview with Doug Flynn earlier today where he talked about Pete and he he spoke about how he had changed his mind about the the Hall of Fame case and the reinstatement, all of that. Uh, in large part due to Major League Baseball shift on the perspective of gambling. I think now, I've changed my mind now. I used to think, all right, what he did, he doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. But since baseball now has adopted the bet on every single pitch, every action that goes on in the game, if that's the way they're going to play it, then Pete Rose put all to go in the Hall of Fame. But if you could just speak on how you feel about where we are now, of course, he was given a lifetime ban. We all know that. But – his lifetime, it's passed. You know, is the door open or should it be, in your opinion? Oh, it should be. He should be in anyway. Uh, but I'll tell you what, when uh, we all found out the truth, uh, a lot of us had suspected as years went by, Doug and I can tell you some pretty good stories of the fantasy camp we were running with Pete involved in it. <clears throat> but this is during the investigation of Pete uh, back in the late 80s. Um, when, when when it first came down, he was banned from the game. Um, I I agreed with it because one of the things that is is uh, requirements for uh, becoming a Hall of Famer. Not only you got to be a great player, but you got to. It says you must uphold the honesty and integrity of the game of baseball. Well, Pete failed at that, and uh, you know a lot of us guys were mad at him. Johnny Bench was probably uh, more vocal about that than anybody, but Johnny's changed his mind too. And I, here's the way I, I guess, I guess until Pete's book came out when he, and he, and he, he admitted it in the book, I think to help sell books, but he admitted it finally 15 years after the, after the ban. And now it's been another 35 years since then. And you're right with the, with the, with baseball, major league baseball, with the stance they have now with the on gambling and it's on the screen, they get the they put the lines out there every day. I, I I've forgiven Pete and and we are supposed to be a forgiving people. And I, you know, asterisk by his name, I don't care. God almighty, he was one of the greatest players that ever lived. He was the he was one of the toughest players that ever lived, one of the greatest leaders that ever lived. His on-the-field accomplishments cannot deny him being in the Hall of Fame. And, you know, when he committed the sin uh, of betting against his own team and then finally admitted it, uh, the, 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 the biggest pain was felt by him and, and his family. And I, I know uh, that pain carried with him until he died, and, and I know his family's still in that, in that pain. But I think a lot of people have... Uh, forgiven Pete over the years. A lot of people forgave him right off the bat and wanted him to go in the Hall of Fame, but uh, he belongs. He belongs in there. He should have been in there before he passed. Is he going to go in now? Here's my thought on that. Um, as long as Robert Man Manford is the commissioner, I say they won't put him in. And what's happened is from from the Giamatti day to uh, of the ban to uh, Selig and uh, all the commissioners since. They've just handed down this ban on Pete, and every time Pete applies for reinstatement, he gets rejected. Well, Manfred's done that uh, since he took over, and Pete's had a couple of other requests in, like I think once a year, and he's rejected them. So um, if, if Manfred puts him in now after he's passed, good, but shame on Manfred for do, waiting to do that. Um, you know, I, I just shame on him for waiting to do that. I'm not a... I'm not a Robert Manfred fan. He's he's changed the game too much. He's changed the he's changed the game from the way Pete Rose played it. He sure has, hasn't he? Absolutely. There, you know, and I think a lot of baseball fans, more than likely, and I know they do, agree with you there. Um, but when you think about this, with with Pete every year trying to to be reinstated, what does it say about a guy who admits his fault? every year tries to come back to the sport that gave him the fame, gave him the notoriety, but also never bashes the sport. He made an, a conscious effort. Every interview he ever did, every time there was a microphone in front of him, he never bashed the game. You know, 
Daryl, a lot of times when I talk to old timers, you know, there is a tendency to, to not like the current product. Pete never really did that. It was always, he was always a great ambassador for the game and no matter what form it came, he would, he would disagree with things, but he would always say baseball is still the best sport ever. And you know, he was just a great ambassador. What does it say about a guy who has been ousted, has been really a pariah since he, of course, got banned? What does it say about a guy who still defends the sport? It says he, it says he should be in the in the Hall of Fame. I think I I, I think the the whole hang up is is, is Pete had never stopped betting. He never. I mean, he lived in Vegas, and, and uh, he never, he never stopped, and he never. Uh, he repented for what he did because he admitted that in his book and in a number of interviews after that. But as time's gone by, he still, he'll still go to the casino, and he'll, you know, he'll still go to the horse track, and and uh, and things like that. So, uh, and and the current commissioner, they they just they look past all that goodwill that Pete puts out there. You're right. He's one of the greatest baseball ambassadors that ever played the game. He and Ernie Banks, in my mind. And, and Pete, has, you're right, he's never talked badly about the game. He's never talked badly about He's talked about the changes that have been made and things like that. But no, he was he was one of the greatest baseball ambassadors that ever lived. And um, uh, I, I just I just think that uh, I, I just think that uh, because he he he. Uh, didn't go to a, a a rehab program or get clean from gambling and all that, even though he may just be casually betting nowadays, that doesn't sit right, didn't sit right with baseball. And that's what uh, has, has kept him out. Glenn Smith Chevrolet GMC offers popular full-size trucks with a legacy of strength and durability. Side by side, the new Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra 1500s discounted up to $13,000 off. Or big, heavy-duty Chevy and GMC 2500s discounted up to $8,000 off. Rugged durability, powerful engines, and advanced technology. Choose your perfect truck today at Glenn Smith Chevrolet GMC in Opelika. Get ready to smile. Well, I hope one day, if nothing else, he will find his rightful place uh, with, with a plaque in Cooperstown. But, Daryl, I wanted to focus on the, the man, not the accolades, not, you know, the, the Hall of Fame case and, and all of the things that go with that. I want to talk about your relationship with him. Uh, I, I know you got stories. Every time I ask you for a story, you seem to come up with a new one. I've heard a few of them over the years. But when you think of Pete Rose, what is a story that comes to mind in, in, for you, he had this. He had this knack. He was a funny guy. He had this knack. I mean, the first couple of years I was in a big league camp before I got to the big leagues, he would always yell, "Hey, Cheney, come over here. Come over here. Bring, come over here, and uh, bring a bat." I'm thinking, all right, he's going to show me a couple of hitting tips here. Yeah, I'd come up to him and he'd say, uh, "Not this dirt out of my spikes, will you?" <laughs> he said, "He'd always say, never lose your glove. Never lose your glove." He was he was quite the uh, uh, the, the com comedic uh, kind of guy, uh, and, and he and he he was a uh, uh, he was a competitor uh, to no end, uh, and he had fun uh, while he was doing it. Um, I I can remember uh, the times when he had to make uh, changes to, to positions that he was playing not all of them were his choices you know he, he was a five-time all-star i mean excuse me he was a he was an all-star at five different positions during his career and i was i was in those seven years i played with him he went from you know right field to left field and from second base right field to left field uh first base third base third base uh when the big red machine really took off and the way he approached those uh, moments was really aspiring to me. Um, you know, in 1975, 75, when he took over third base full time, uh, we were trying to figure out who to play at third base. And I was kind of hoping it'd be me, you know? Uh, and, and when he took over third base, there was like three or four guys, me and Dennis Menke and, and uh, John Vukovic was there for a while, Ed Crosby and, and Pete, when he, when he got the job at third base, it was just, let's go to work. And, you know, 
followed by examples what he said. He got out there and he started taking ground balls at third base. He didn't he didn't say anything in the press about any of his other guys who wanted the job. Uh, this is what they want me to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the best I can at it. So uh, some stories I can't tell you because we can't put them on the air. Um, but as a as a humanitarian, um, he was kind. Uh, he was kind, and he he had he had days when uh, he he would he would just uh, pick up your check for you. You know, uh, he had more money than most of the guys on the team, and uh, and he earned it too. Um, but uh, people look at him and they see, okay, it's, it's, it's Ty Cobb, um, you know, Ty Cobb all over again and, and, uh, the betting and all that stuff. But the guy had a, he had a soft heart for people that needed it. Absolutely. And, you know, I've, I've spoken to a lot of your former teammates, Daryl, with all of what you do with the United way, which we'll talk about in just a second. But one of those guys we've talked about earlier, Doug Flynn, again, watching that interview with him earlier today, he spoke about the fact that Pete, you know, wasn't blessed with all the gifts that a lot of the Hall of Famers across the years have been blessed with. He wasn't the fastest. He may have not had the, you know, the most power, that kind of thing. But he made the most of what he had. Can you give me an example and and maybe give us just a little insight as to, you know, his everyday approach and just the, you know, I guess the best way to put it is he was a gamer and I don't know if there's anybody like that now in today's game, and I don't know if there ever will be again. There, there, there'll never be another Pete Rose. There'll never be anybody break uh, half the records he's got. He got ten records. Uh, there, there'll never be another. Uh, there'll never be another one like him. Um, he, he would. He would uh, in spring training. Back back in in our day, uh, we didn't have batting gloves then they had they had them but nobody wore them yeah and Pete would Pete would swing at so many pitches in spring training he would he would do it until he built uh, uh calluses up on his blisters and calluses up on his hands and everybody was saying why you why you why are you swinging with all that blood coming off your hands and all that kind of stuff he said I'm, I'm toughing up my calluses because once I get them tough I won't need to worry about him the whole year. And um uh yeah, that's 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 how tough he was. I mean, goodness sakes. And you know, I don't know how else to describe it. Uh when you you know, he saw a lot of guys like me come and go. And uh I only saw one Pete Rose come and go, you know. <laughs> that's that's a great way to put it. And Daryl, you were a part, you know, of, of a Really solid team, you know, in 75 that, of course, went on to win the World Series. Anytime you're talking about the greatest teams ever assembled, you know, the Big Red Machine is going to come up in that conversation. To be a part of that, not only around Pete, but also around, you know, you mentioned him earlier, Johnny Bench, Joe Morgan, Tony Perez, Sparky Anderson at, at, at the managerial position. Uh, you had a good bullpen with Raleigh Eastwick out there. You know, to be a part of that team and to win the World Series along that cast of characters, what did that mean for you? Oh, you know, <laughs> how many guys can say they played on a World Championship team? You know, it's 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 been uh, shoot. When I got done playing, it was my talking point going in my sales pitches when I was doing when I had to work. You know, and I would I would sit there at a sales meeting and I'd have my hand up. I don't have my ring on now, but I have my hand up with my World Championship ring on it. I'd be talking to the guy across the table. He'd be looking at that ring. He said, are you the Daryl Cheney that played for the Reds? I had him make a sale, baby. Uh, but we had, uh, you know, I played with those guys before 75 and 76 came along when I got traded. Back in the, uh, <clears throat> and when they start, first started calling us the Big Red Machine, I got a picture of me in a picture, uh, black and white, with me and, and um, uh, Bobby Tolan, Pete Rose, Tommy Helms, Lee May, Tony Perez, and we all got it autographed. That's got to be worth some money nowadays. But we had, in 1970, in 1972, I thought we had the best team of all the Big Red Machine teams in 72. Um, we had we had Bobby Tolan at, 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 in center field yet. Joe just came over. Joe, uh, you know, we had uh, Hal McCray. Uh, man, Mankey was at third. Davey at short. Um uh, you know, uh, they were all, all good teams, but it's, and it's just like the game today. You watch it. It's so hard to win a championship. It's so 
hard. And people don't realize it. You know, yeah, in 1970, we had we won 106 games. We got beat by the Orioles in five. And uh, we were heavily favored to win that. But to walk down the street, I'll never forget. <clears throat> I'll never forget, you know, the first two World Series I was in, uh, 70 and 72. So 75 comes along, and then we lost the playoffs in 73 to the Mets. 75 comes along, and we're getting ready to start the World Series. And Pete calls a little meeting in the clubhouse, and he says, uh, you know, guys, we've been here enough. And he says, we've been here an awful lot lately. We haven't won anything yet. He says, let's let's reset our goal a little bit. We, let's, let's win this thing for once. And it, and if they didn't win, we didn't win in 75, no, no tell them what it happened in 76. But you started that you kind of seal your legacy for those other three World Series you were in in playoffs. He says, let's let's reset our goals and and uh, and, and go out and win this thing. And when we drove in those convertible cars uh downtown Cincinnati, Cincinnati is a uh, downtown has a lot of high rises together. It's 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 kind of like New York, but smaller. And our trade route took us from our parade route took us from the ballpark into downtown and around what they call a, 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 a square there in uh, Cincinnati. And, you know, people hanging out the windows and throwing confetti and all that kind of stuff. And just knowing that you're riding that car, as close to your question earlier, riding that car and people say, look, there goes, there goes Daryl Chaney. He's a member of the 1975 world champion Cincinnati Reds. And, uh, that's that's nice to have on your resume. Lynn Smith Chevrolet GMC presents a fantastic lineup of popular full-size SUVs and mid-size trucks. Compare side-by-side. Side. Take your choice from new Chevrolet Tahos and GMC Yukons discounted up to $7,000 off. Or Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyons discounted up to $5,000 off. Experience unmatched durability, powerful engines, and advanced technology. Choose your perfect vehicle today at Glenn Smith Chevrolet GMC in Opelika. Get ready to smile. Daryl, you know, it I run a Braves channel, you know, that that's what I what I do every day. It's you will rarely ever see me in a in a jersey with another team on it. But there are certain players that just stick out for me. Pete Rose was one of those players. And I don't think there'll ever be another one. And with that, I don't think there's ever going to be a player that will represent a city like Pete Rose did, being from there and and playing the way he did. I know baseball had its opinions about Pete. I know even Cincinnati had its opinions about Pete. But what does it say, you know, about the the fan base there in Cincinnati that Pete Rose, even through all the controversy, is still cherished and still a a valued member of that team and valued member of that their history. Here's what I think is going to happen. Uh, if you remember, well, maybe you don't. Uh, when when he got in all this gambling trouble, the, the, the street along Riverfront Stadium was called Pete Rose Way. And he took that sign down. He put it up Joe Nuxall Way. I'm thinking the fan base in Cincinnati loved him so much that now that he's passed, there'll be another Pete Rose. Pete Rose Street, Pete Rose Way, uh, dedicated uh, to his memory. I, I just I just feel it. Uh, you're right. He, he is... He is of all the guys that uh, that I played with, and, and there are some some great ball players, uh, you know, being from Cincinnati, Ronnie Oster was from Cincinnati, and but Pete Rose was from Cincinnati, and uh, uh, there's 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 millions of uh, guys that are that grew up ten years younger than me, uh, fifteen years younger than me and Pete, and and uh, that. They grew up with us. They grew up with Pete. They, 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 they tuned the radio on to hear what Pete was doing. They turned the television on to hear what Pete was doing. They loved Pete Rose. And Pete Rose loved that city. So my prediction right here is that there'll be another street name for, for Pete Rose in the not-too-distant future. I hope that happens. I hope there's a Hall of Fame plaque on the way. Uh, sooner rather than later. Um, I, I have doubts about it, but I I still hold out hope. I, I wish that it had been done um, prior to today, uh, just because I think the speech would have been much better. Um, but all in all, I think that guy deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He has made every possible attempt to right the ship, 
and uh, he will certainly be missed in, in the circle of baseball. We've lost a lot of greats in recent years, and, and today is no different. Daryl, before you go, I, I always want to open up the mic. You do great work up there in Helen, Georgia, for the United Way of White County every year, celebrity golf tournament, but you raise money all year long. Uh, if you could just tell our viewers about that, what all you guys do, and, and what all it helps. Well, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, this will be uh, the 24th year uh, that this tournament has been uh, in place, and I think it'll be the fifth year that has had my name on it. Um, all the benefits, every 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 dollar, every penny of every dollar stays in White County, Georgia, which is one of, if not the poorest county in the state. I'm still, I still think that's where it's ranked. We have 16 different agencies, give or take one or two a year, uh, that apply for benefits from United Way, um, and uh, all all the money uh, is distributed to those uh, to those uh, 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 organizations based on their need. They apply for the money, and I've been to the allocation meetings, and it's a it's a heartfelt thing to see an administrator of uh, battered uh, uh, women come in and, and get a check, um, and this you know, the administrator is volunteering to do the work, and the money is just is just so much needed. So it's very gratifying. So all the money stays in the United Way White County. Next year's tournament is going to be on the 14th and 15th of April. We we run it usually every year to the starts the Monday after the, the Masters. And that'll be the case uh uh next year. So uh and we have former football players, former baseball players, former broadcasters. We got to get you to start playing it now that you're a TV star. I gotta, I gotta get my game up, Daryl. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta give me a couple years. No, 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 you don't need a game. Most of the guys playing this don't have a game. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just so much fun for such a great cause, and it's a two-day event. It'll be on Monday and Tuesday, the fourteenth and fifteenth of April. You can go to uh, find out all about it at uh, www.unitedwaywhitecounty.org. Unitedwaywhitecounty.org, and when you get on that website, you'll see. You'll see all kinds of interviews. You'll see some of your stuff on there, and you'll see some interviews we did when Bobby was able. Bobby Cox was able to play Phil, of course, uh, Negro, and uh, over the years we've had we've we've had some really really famous guys play, and we've had some really guys that uh, are kind of like me, non marquee guys that, but they just want to help uh, this great cause. So my heart's still in it, and um, we're we're going to kick away and and do it in the again on the. And you've got a young man there in in, uh, in Columbus that's going to help us uh, out with some uh, younger players because everybody's getting older, right? <laughs> we got to get some younger players. I enjoy going every year, Daryl. It's one of my favorite things that I get to do. Just sit around, hang around with some old ball players, hear some great stories. Even if I've heard them before, I always love to hear them again. Daryl, you're one of my favorite people to talk to. I really appreciate you taking the time to remember Pete Rose today. Of course, he will be missed. 83 years old. Uh, Pete Rose passing away yesterday. And again, one of the greats. We've lost many over the years, and, and we lose another one uh, yesterday. But again, Pete Rose will be remembered. Hopefully one day he will make it into the Baseball Hall of Fame. But either way, he will be remembered by fans of baseball forever. He will. Amen. Well, he, he was always greedy. <laughs> he, if he got a hit the first time, he wanted to get two. If he got two, he wanted to get four. And a lot of times he did one year in the minor leagues, I was managing the making, we are playing in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, Dodger Farm Club. He was 0 for 2 the first inning and went 5 for 7 the rest of the game. God. Awesome. Yeah, he's a, he's a, what a hitter he was. In, in your opinion, with everything else considered, do you think he's a Hall of Famer? Pete Rose? Yes, sir. Yeah. If Ty Cobb, he broke Ty Cobb's record from base in, and Cobb is, uh, without question, one of the greatest shooters of all time. Yeah. Yeah, he broke. But I don't know if he'll ever make it or not. My first time against Bob Gibson. I'm playing against Bob Gibson. I'm playing second base for Tommy Helms in 1969. We're in St. Louis. And... Um, you know, he, he uh, Bob's a real competitor, and I this is this, you could call it an unwritten, unwritten, unwritten rule, 
but it was a Bob Gibson rule. <laughs> And so the, he struck me out the first two times I faced him, and the third time I hit a line drive right, up at, right back at him, him, him in the knee. He bounced off the mound and threw me out, and I'm, I'm jogging back with my head down behind the, you know, the mound. You know, rookies, you don't look up when you're going behind the Hall of Fame pitcher like that. And I, and I hear him say, with my head down, I hear him say, don't ever do that again, kid. And I, I get to the dugout, and Pete Rose says to me, he says, what did he say to you? I said, he said, don't ever do that again, kid. And Pete gets up on the top of the dugout steps and starts screaming at Gibson, Gibson, you ain't got nothing. And, you know, he didn't say that, but you ain't got nothing, leave the kid alone and all that kind of stuff. I was thinking, wait a minute, Pete, I got maybe one more swing at this guy. Sure enough, my next time up in the top of the ninth inning, first pitch, he hits me right here. I mean, I couldn't run away from it. He, 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 and you know he did it on purpose. Yeah. He knows it. I know it. Everybody at both clubs knew it. Everybody in the <laughs> stands knew it. And it hurt. I got to first base, and our first base coach, Hal Smith, said, don't let him know it hurts. And I'm thinking, okay, I, I won't. <laughs> and knocked the wind out of me and everything, you know. This video has been presented by Glenn Smith Chevrolet GMC and Opelika. Get ready to smile. Baseball fans. Make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to this channel. As always, thank you for your support.